The Ronin sword transferred to pilot. Well, it's been a while, hasn't it? Welcome back to the CADcast. I am CAD, and I'm alone again today. I'm going to be doing something a little bit different. I've decided to kind of make a one-off review. Maybe I'll do a little bit more of these. I think it's a, the CADcast format is a great way for me to get my opinions out there about a game or a movie or anything that I uh, recently digested in the entertainment world and kind of give you my opinions on it. Close the coffee there. Today, I am going to be giving you a spoiler free, no spoilers, uh, analysis and opinion review of Resident Evil Village, also known as Resident Evil 8, the latest mainline game in the Resident Evil series following the immense surprise success of Resident Evil 7 Biohazard. Resident Evil 8 is pretty good. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Up until Resident Evil 8, I had never played much of a Resident Evil game. I played a little bit of RE2 Remake, but not enough to really get into it. But I did understand and know what happened in RE7. And Resident Evil 8 is a fantastic stepping point for a first-time uh, enjoyer of the Resident Evil universe for a first-time participant. It's a great way to get into it and kind of understand what the feel of a Resident Evil is. Resident Evil 8 follows uh, about, I think, a few years after the events of 7 Biohazard, with uh, your main character, Ethan Winters, the Chad Winters, uh, moved to Scandinavia. It never really says, the game never says that it's Scandinavia, but it is Scandinavia with your wife and your new uh, newborn kid, Rose. And all of a sudden, some forced, unforeseen tragedy befalls upon your family, and your child gets kidnapped, and you, Ethan Winters, have to go get your child back from this village, from these four uh, fucking weirdos, these four strange monsters and humans with these weird powers, and they have this werewolf army. It immediately... I feel that its intro does a great job of getting you invested right away. I know with some with some people, especially the longtime fans of Resident Evil, it could be a point of contention, and I could see that. But for me, looking at Resident Evil uh, Eight as just its own game, I think the intro does a great job. And uh, I should also now mention the the four uh, main enemies you face in the game. The four main big bads, right? Resident Evil 7 had the Baker family with uh, Jack Baker, Marguerite, and uh, Lucas, right? Resident Evil 8 has four, uh, five, but four main big bads. You have the Lady Dimitrescu, which I'm sure if you've been on the internet for, I don't know, the last half a year now, you should know who she is. She's a tall fucking vampire milf. And holy shit, I have never seen the internet, not just a community, but the internet as a one, one fucking hive mind go so cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs ever in my life. Literally, people were fucking going nuts over this tall vampire bitch. Me too. I mean, I wasn't like, you know, coming in the streets, but like, you know, <laughs> like... Capcom knew what they were doing with her, and wow, they did a great job. Her character was good. I liked her presence in the game. She was very big, literally, but she was very foreboding. You would see her at the end of the hallway, and she would just be this tall, just imposing figure with these fucking, like, three feet long claws. And she's just fucking... She's really good. She has a good presence. Her uh, stage in the castle at the beginning of the game is fantastic. Without a doubt, the strongest section of the game. Uh, she does a uh, absolutely fantastic job. Um, and she, uh, she leaves an impact. I can say that without a doubt. I mean, all four of them do, but Lady Demetresque is, without a doubt, the highlight of the cast. Great job. After her, you then go to uh, this lady named Donna Beneviento, who is this 
kind of shrouded woman with a doll that she uh, speaks through, mainly. The doll is this kind of deranged, psychotic, uh, supernatural being, and Donna is this kind of quiet, non-expressive, just figure. It's almost like Donna's not even there, but the doll is Donna, which is what they were going for with her. First section of the game is good. Not as uh, exciting to me as Castle Dimitrescu was. However, Resident Evil 8 and House Beneviento has probably one of the most terrifying horror moments ever in a video game. On par with shit like Amnesia, like The Dark Descent, and fucking P.T. And if you know me, you know that I believe P.T. is the scariest game ever made. Wow. The moment... I'm not going to tell you what the moment is in House Beneviento. If you've ever played Resident Evil 8 or you've seen footage of it, you know what I'm talking about. But that moment in the house is so fucking good. Bro, chef's kiss to that shit. It was amazingly terrifying. Fucking amazing. The rest of House Beneviento was okay. Not as exciting as that one horror moment, but still pretty alright. After that, you go to uh, the water reservoir near the windmills and face this uh, kind of grotesque, uh, disfigured old man uh, named uh, Moreau. He's this half-man, half-fish fucker, and he's kind of seen by the four... Uh, the four main villains as kind of like the weakest of them all by them. Like they, he's the laughing stock to them, and he's this troubled person trying to impress the uh, the woman that these four people uh, kind of serve under. He's kind of simping for, her, and he's like just he's just disheveled and pathetic, and he dies uh, just absolutely. He, he doesn't die nobly at all. He has. Uh, his character drives are very much beyond him now, and he's kind of just left to rot in this area of the village. Uh, you can't help but feel bad for him, even though he's a villain. I felt remorse for him because, again, I'm not. This is a spoiler-free review, uh, but certain aspects of what makes these characters them was beyond their control. Like they didn't 100% ask for what happened to them, and so you can't help but feel a little bad for Moreau. But he easily, to me, is probably the weakest out of the main four villains. He's still good, his design's absolutely fucking disgusting, and he's always, he's that kind of, you, you want to look away, but you can't. That kind of effect when he's on screen and when you're dealing with him. So, not at all a bad villain, but just a little bit less than the, the other three. And then finally, you get to one of my favorite characters in the game, Carl Heisenberg. This uh, over-the-top, flamboyant, bloodborne-looking ass guy who uses, like, magneto-ass metal powers and can, like, bend the metal around him and create weapons and shit. And he's got this big-ass hammer. He's so fun. He, uh... The team actually stressed to the actor, the voice actor of Heisenberg, to capture the energy of Nicolas Cage. And uh, it definitely comes through. And he is a lot of fun. Very goofy. Not scary, really, compared to, like, Demetresque or Benev Beneviento. But he is fun. He is fun as shit. And I had a blast dealing with him. He's another one of those characters that I'm not going to forget for a little while. Uh, with him and uh, Demetresque, but he does a great job. He's fun, he's chaotic the entire way. He's an absolute beast. With that being said, uh, I'm going to move on a little bit to the kind of atmosphere and the environment of the game. The game, like I mentioned, uh, takes place in a single village uh, of unnamed uh, namesake, I suppose. A uh, single village, which worships this uh, religious kind of figure called Mother Miranda. And Mother Miranda is kind of like all-knowing uh, being that watches over the village, and that's what the villagers believe. But Mother Miranda, behind the scenes, actually works with the four uh, enemies, the four main enemies of the game, and kickstarts the kind of conflict in the game. She's 
I'm not going to go too much into Mother Miranda. She's kind of a late game discovery that you really get to understand then. But in this village, it's very tight knit. Uh, but it's very diverse. You have the grand castle of Dimitrescu. You have the kind of shitty crumbled house of Beneviento. You have the flooded kind of disgusting uh, reservoir and windmill section of Moreau. And then Heisenberg has his secluded factory on the outskirts of town. And then on the inside, you have the village itself with these crumbled buildings and destroyed, uh, you know, homesteads. And it's just very atmospheric mixed in with some kind of ruin section some underground portions it's a lot of fun uh, i think it does a great job i don't think it's too big i don't think it's too small there's a lot of intricate secrets and details and puzzles for you to find and it feels good it's a good place to explore it's uh it's definitely different than the baker house from resident evil 7 a lot less cramped way more wide open but it's different in a good way. It's a cool mix of medieval European style and then just strange kind of uh, Resident Evil bio, you know, weapon shit. And so it's a good place to spend the game. Uh, the four enemy areas, the castle, the house, the reservoir, and the uh, factory do a good job. I think they're all okay. A little gripe I have, though, at the end with Heisenberg and the factory, I feel like that moment goes on a little too long. It takes its time, not in a good way. It feels like it's endless. You just kind of slogging through these corridors, facing the same kind of enemies over and over again. It feels extremely repetitive. And it's the only real section of the game where I got bored was uh, going through Heisenberg's factory at the end. Uh, a lot of people have mentioned, a lot of reviewers have mentioned the ending ending section of gameplay, which I'm not going to mention what happens or anything like that, but they, uh, they describe it as over the top in a bad way, out of left field, kind of doesn't fit in with the rest of the game. To an extent, I can agree with them. And again, this might just be me as a Resident Evil kind of outsider looking in. Uh, many of the people that have described the ending uh, section of the game as that way are longtime fans of the games that have been playing it since the PlayStation 2 era and all that. And so I can't really speak on that sense of it. However, Resident Evil to me, from an outsider looking in, has always seemed as kind of a like a like an over the top horror experience like you could could you could compare games like silent hill and resident evil silent hill to me is very scary very heavy uh not many laughs it's just very dense and very atmospheric very scary game hell pt was a tech demo for a silent hill sequel that never happened so you kind of can understand what uh tone silent hill is trying to go for where to contrast Resident Evil to me has always been the kind of fun, but scary game. It's kind of like the Haunted Mansion at Disneyland. It's spooky, but it's fun. Silent Hill is just terrifying all the way. But Resident Evil is that spooky, fun combo. And so I feel that ending section in RE8 wasn't too out of left field. It might have been a little over the top, but I felt like it made sense. Uh, I would recommend, if you have the hardware to play resident evil 8 and i played it on my original xbox one and it played great it was 30 frames per second uh 720p so not insanely great performance but i feel like it ran well and i got the kind of vibe that it was going for there was no compromise for graphics in my opinion or performance and never had any stutters never had any crashes it did a, a good job of running but if you have the hardware for it, like a good PC, or even a last-gen console like I do, I would recommend you play Resident Evil 8. It is a blast, it's a lot of fun, and uh, I it, it captured me. I feel an urge now to play the old ones that people like, like Resident Evil 2 or 3, after playing Resident Evil 8. It's a fantastic game, in my opinion, and uh, it captures the fun, to me, of Resident Evil. I would give it a solid 8 out of 10. With that being said, uh, I've been CAD, this has been the CADcast, and uh, 
Thank you for listening. Have a good one.